No, I can't. It's not. All right, I'm trying to get everything together. I'm still learning this Facebook thing, you guys. Hey, Miss Mona. Oh, Lord, this Facebook. My goodness. Hey, Miss Javette, I'm trying to get, see if it's a, I don't like that view, but we'll make it work. Thank y'all for joining me tonight. I am going to talk about, yes, I am enough to move past my uh, Mephibosheth mindset, which is from my book, You Can't Quit Now, uh, Day 19. I talk about Mephibosheth uh and then we're going to talk about overcoming uh, the insecure in your insecurity tonight. So thank you all for joining me. Uh, again, if you haven't got Yes, I Am Enough, my sixth book, uh, please get it. TanyaWhite.com, Amazon.com. And if you're in Louisville, I will deliver it to you. Brandy Johnson, my cuzzo, thank you. You know I'm waiting for that big announcement, right? Um, which I won't say, but you know I know. Um... And if you don't have You Can't Quit Now, please get that. Please get it, read it, start book clubs and everything. Um, you know I'm trying to get to a destination, and I can't get there without a village such as yourself. So be my village to read and promote and pass on my books. So I'm going to get started because I know tonight is Wednesday night, hump day. People are coming from Bible study. Um, and so I want to talk about... Um, yes, I am enough. How to move past my Mephibosheth mindset. And this Mephibosheth you can read about in 2 Samuel chapter 4, verse 4. And 2 Samuel chapter 9, Mephibosheth. Hello, Chia. Hello, Miss Bridget. Uh, so I'm going to talk about four points tonight. I'm going to talk about who uh, is this man called Mephibosheth. Who is he? Why haven't I never heard of him if I haven't heard of him? How he was dropped before he was actually dropped. And the lifelong effects of living with the Mephibosheth mindset. And then how Mephibosheth could have broken free from being secure with his insecurity. Which is in, uh, I talk about being secure uh, in your insecurity. And in, yes, I am enough. And then Mephibosheth is in my book, You Can't Quit Now. So I'm merging two of my books, my latest books, uh, and talking about this tonight. So who is Mephibosheth and why haven't I ever heard of him? And you may have, but Mephibosheth, he is, the one we're going to talk about tonight, you will find, um, if you look in the Bible, to Mephibosheth's name. We're going to talk about the one tonight that was Saul's uh, grandson, who was Jonathan's son. And in Hebrew, actually, Mephibosheth means the mouth of shame, the mouth of shame. And we're going to talk about that and how just your name can create a whole mindset of you living uh, in your not enoughness and living in a mindset that says, I am not good enough to be who I know I should be. So his name literally literally means mouth of shame. And his story is, like I said, is mentioned in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 4 and, and then 2 Samuel chapter 9. And so Mephibosheth, if you look in chapter 4, he is, they say, he is the grandson of Saul, the son of Jonathan, who were both killed in the bloody battle during this chapter. And he was five years old, Mephibosheth, at this time. He was being cared for by his nurse maid. And a boy hearing that Saul and Jonathan were killed in a bloody battle against some enemies, she got scared. She got frightened. She picked him up in haste. And then she left the royal palace and began to run. Um, and as she was running anxiously away from um, just the thought of enemies coming to get the baby, what she did was stumble. And then as she stumbled... Mephibosheth was thrown to the ground and paralyzed in both feet, and he was unable to ever walk again. So let's just think about that for a minute. So Mephibosheth, he was 
the grandson of King Saul, the son of Prince Jonathan. He was in living in royalty. And because his Saul and Jonathan got killed, the person who was taking care of him got frightened. In her fear, she left with haste, left the safety of the royal kingdom in haste. And in her haste, she stumbled, whereby allowing him to be thrown to the ground and injured for life. Now, let's think about that, how so many of us today are paralyzed emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and unable to proceed in life because the person who was responsible for caring for us, it could be a parent, it could be a teacher, uh, it could be a, a pastor who was responsible for caring for our spiritual needs and growth, Some, whoever was responsible for you, uh, just think about it may have become afraid at one point in that time. Okay? They became afraid. They ran out of the uh home and care of safety. If it's a, a spiritual somebody who's supposed to spiritually take care of you, just imagine they them running outside the will of God, running outside the kingdom and uh, not living by kingdom principles. That's how uh they they could have dropped you. If it was uh, a parent, they may have neglected you, may have not taken care of your emotions, uh, uh, your physical needs, your mental needs, because they couldn't care for themselves. And so somebody became afraid, ran outside the kingdom, ran from their place in God, um, and they were carrying you. And while they were carrying you, they stumbled. Sometimes it could be they stumbled into addiction. They could have stumbled into uh you know, a series of relationships that were damaging to you because they were damaging to them. Um, they could have uh, stumbled financially and they couldn't take care of you because they were maybe irresponsible. Uh, and so people in our lives have literally dropped us, not physically, but emotionally, spiritually, mentally. I know I've experienced that. And let me bring balance to that. I have dropped other people uh, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Okay? So there's a balance there. Because what is what is the thing? Hurting people hurt people. And so that what was happening. She, The nurse who was taking care of Mephibosheth was hurt and scared, stumbled. Mephibosheth was thrown to the ground and lamed, paralyzed for life. So how did that affect him? It affected him throughout his entire life because if you read in the Bible, he was identified with his issue throughout the Bible. It said Mephibosheth, who was lame in both feet. Hey, my Auntie Jackie's on here. She got my back, y'all. Um, lame in both feet. And so he was identified by his issue. Why? Because he identified himself by the way he carried himself, who he was around, where he lived, because he left the place of uh, where he grew up in royalty and all that and went to a place called Lodabar that was lower and uh, not even some place that he was destined to live. But he went there because he had people carry him and... That because people were carrying him, they were carrying them to the place where they lived. And sometimes when we allow people to carry us emotionally, uh, mentally, and physically, they carry us to the place where they're comfortable, not to the place where we need to be. If you uh, reflect on the story about the eagle who was in the chicken coop, that's what happens. We are eagles sometimes, and we are surrounded by people with a chicken coop mentality. And so they can only carry us to from chicken coop to chicken coop because they don't know how to fly like eagles. They don't know how to soar. They weren't built like that. And so when we allow people to carry us in um, and we do not have the mentality to push forward past our issues, that's what happens. And that's what happened to Mephibosheth. Like I said, throughout the Bible, he was named by his name and by his issue. But what is the Mephibosheth mindset? That's exactly what it is. It's when you allow your issues to become your identity, your issues to become your identity. And so some of us may have issues with overeating, 
for me, I allowed that issue to become my identity because I always identified with being the fat girl. Um, and you may have issues with promiscuity, um, financial irresp irresponsibility. When you allow your issues to become your identity, that's when you have the Mephibosheth mindset. And remember what his name meant in Hebrew, it means mouth of shame. And so because his name meant shame, that's how he carried himself. And we're going to get into how his family lineages and his negative family pathologies also contribute to his being paralyzed and not want to push past those issues and living a life that in which he felt unworthy, uh, not enough, and uh, secure in his insecurities. Okay? And so that is who Mephibosheth is. He was dropped when he was five years old by his somebody who was supposed to take care of him because they heard that Saul and his father were killed and they were thought they was run, uh, running him to safety, but they weren't. So he was dropped physically. But actually, if you study and get some spiritual insight, he was really dropped before he was dropped. He was dropped emotionally, uh, mentally, and spiritually before he was dropped physically. What are you talking about? So if you go read, I said Mephibosheth was the grandson of who? King Saul. He was the son of Jonathan. And so when you read about Saul's reign and who Saul was, Mephibosheth was really living in the shadow of a grandfather who had not only a gloomy personality, but he had a I'm going to get you back kind of leadership mentality. Okay, so when you read about Saul's reign in, in the book of Samuel, you know Saul uh, was anointed by Samuel. Uh, to become king. But at that time, God really wanted the people to follow a theocracy where God was ruler and king over them. But the people wanted to be ruled by a physical king. So Saul, uh, Samuel anointed Saul and he was appointed king. Now, when you read about Saul, he carried a spirit of rejection, a spirit of revenge, a spirit of retaliation, and just a spirit of unrighteousness uh, throughout his kingship and throughout his reign because he was disobedient on several occasions to God's instructions and that caused him to be reprimanded by Samuel didn't like that because Saul wanted to do what Saul wanted to do but he had to answer even though he was king he failed to realize that he answered to the king of kings and he couldn't handle that because he was dealing with what a spirit of rejection a spirit of revenge retaliation and unrighteousness and he, any leader whether it's in the church or in corporate America, who is not fully aware of who they are and they're operating out of a spirit of rejection, revenge, retaliation, unethical, immoral practices, they always, always going to have a leadership style that is not beneficial to the people. Uh, people are not going to grow. People are, are going to be hurt deliberately by uh, the king. Um, Going to if you disagree with them, they're going. To, you're going to have a target on your back. How many Sauls? How many of us work for some Sauls? Mm -hmm. How many of us live with some Sauls or are friends with some Sauls or in churches with some Sauls? Okay, you don't have to raise your hand. But I have been there. I have had a Saul after me and um, be very vengeful, uh, retaliate, and also um, just reprimand me because of their own spirit of rejection and insecurities. And so that's what uh, Saul operated in. He carried that throughout his leadership and throughout his life. Because if you read, he was married, but he also had a, a concubine at that time. That was not of God. Uh, and the Bible says that he had one concubine named Rispa and she had two sons named Imani and what? Wait for it. Mephibosheth. Now let's let that rest. Mephibosheth, the one we're talking about tonight, grandfather Saul, father Jonathan, grandfather Saul was king. He was married but had a concubine. And his concubine had two sons, one named Imani, one named Mephibosheth. Now, can you imagine being named after your grandfather's mistress? After your grandfather's mistress' son. How, mm, how shameful, how full of tension, full of drama is that for your father to name you 
after his father's mistress son. Not so good. Not so good. Uh, and so that's probably, that's where the, the Hebrew meaning uh, mouth of shame came from. Because there is some shame when you are named after a secret, an unholy and unrighteous secret uh, by your father and your grandfather, son, by a concubine. Let that sit in. So you can imagine people calling his name a Mephibosheth. And if you read, the concubine's sons were killed brutally, hang up on a tree for five five months, I believe. Uh, in in the hot sun for five months, their dead bodies. That was so, uh, you know, disgraceful. And you hear your name after your grandfather's concubine's son, who was brutally, tragically killed, disgraced. And people have to call you that name uh, of the concubine son. Just let that set in. And we can see how he was birthed into uh, a family, a spirit of shame and not feeling good enough. His name literally meant me, mouth of shame. And so before he was physically job, dropped, he was, he was really spiritually, emotionally, and mentally dropped. Based on his family chaos and family drama. All right? And we all have that family chaos and drama and dysfunction uh, operating. So Mephibosheth is no different. And so he had, he was dropped. He developed being paralyzed in both legs, both feet, couldn't move, couldn't do anything for himself, but he couldn't do anything for himself in his mind because even though he was physically paralyzed, he was mentally paralyzed too. He kept telling himself, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough to be uh, considered or viewed as the grandson of a king, the son of a prince. Oh, I'm just a, a, a dirty dog. Guess what uh, one translation said? I'm just a dog. That's what Mephibosheth used to call himself, a lame dog. Um, because he didn't feel worthy. He felt because he was paralyzed and couldn't walk for himself. People had to carry him. He developed that mentality of that he couldn't do anything. And when you develop that mentality that you're going to allow your issue to become your identity, you will never, ever move forward in life and you will stay stuck and stagnant exactly where you are. And you will, you will draw to yourself other people who are willing to carry you, are willing to allow you to stay in that mindset and thinking that you're not good enough, even though, remember, He's the grandson of a king. He has an inheritance, uh, but because he left his royal uh, home and his royal palace and thought that he wasn't good enough, he thought that he was a, no better than a dog, that's what he did. He didn't have anything. He let people convince him, okay, yeah, this is where you need to be. Stay in Lodabar. And he was in Lodabar in his mind and, and, and physically. And so that's what he was. Uh, he was dropped Emotionally, mentally, and uh, spiritually before he was dropped physically. And those caused some lifelong effects. Like I said, he was he had an inheritance, but he never did access it because he didn't think he was good enough. And how many times do we allow our inheritance to just sit there? God has promised us something, but because in our mind we have a Mephibosheth mindset that we're not good enough, that you know our issues have become an, our identity, that we don't go and grab what God has already promised us, what we already had probably probably previously, but we relinquished it because in our mind, we don't think that we're good enough. And that's what he did. In his mind, he, he lived his whole life wandering from place to place, not living where God wanted him to because he had that mindset, I'm not good enough. Until King David said, I need to find somebody in the house of Saul who is still alive, to bless them. Hey, Miss Terry. Hey, Rael. Hey, everybody that came on. David, who was Saul's uh, praise and worship leader, eventually became king. And he was, him and Jonathan were covenant friends. Saul didn't like that because Saul had his own issues with Jonathan and he had issues with David. And because they were covenant friendships, he had issues with both. Um, but when David became king, he said, I must find somebody still living from the lineage of Saul so I can bless them. And so what he had his people to do was go to find who was still living from Saul's lineage. And who did they find? They found Mephibosheth. 
They found him where? In Lodabar, somewhere that he was not even destined to be. And so David invited Mephibosheth to the king's palace, to the king's table, told him, you know, from this day forward, you don't have to worry about anything. Your inheritance, I will give you. And at the table with the king, the king who acknowledged that, you know, he was royalty and he had an inheritance and that he was going to take care of him. He still had that mindset. I'm not good enough. Why are you talking to me? Why are you trying to bless me? I am no better than a dog. That was his mindset. And even at the king's table, the king is saying, hey, I am going to bless you. You don't have to worry about anything else in life because I am going to bless you with your inheritance from your grandfather. But Mephibosheth sitting at the king's table now. Again, he's sitting at the king's table getting what's rightfully his. And he's saying, I'm not, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. So even when the king was trying to bless him, he had that mindset that, you know what? I don't deserve this. I don't, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. But the king said, you know, you will always have a seat at my table. And that he did. But he did it in a mindset of still thinking he wasn't worthy. But he could have he could have broken free from that. Being secure with being uh, insecure with his issues about being paralyzed. He could have broken free. Why? Because if he remembered who he was and where he came from, he was the grandson of a king. He was the son of a prince. He had an inheritance. He didn't even remember that. All he remembered was that he was dropped and he was paralyzed. One slight tragedy in his life helped him erase everything that every other good thing that was going on in his life. Of being a king's uh, grandson, being a prince's son, having all access to the royal palace. He forgot all that because that one issue he allowed to become his identity. And so if he had broken free, broken uh, and remembered who he was in, in, in the palace and what he was called to do, he could have broken free. Also, he could have pressed past being paralyzed physically and could still could have helped ask people to help him, you know, uh, do what he was supposed to do. Not carry him, but coach him into the next level on how. How do I deal with this? I have this paralysis, but I know I'm not supposed to stay here. I can move past this. If he had that mindset, okay, this issue is not going to be my identity. I'm going to push past this and continue to live a life that is abundant in God and in my rightful inheritance, regardless of my per, uh, not having any feet, he could have broken free. And then if he was surrounded himself with people who had a mindset to say, you know what, you're better than this. You don't deserve to be here. You don't deserve to be in this land of Lodabari. You are a grandson of a king. You have an inheritance. You need to go back and claim what's rightfully yours. But he wasn't surrounding himself with that. And how many times have we forgotten who we are, who God has called us to be? How many times have we allowed one issue in our life to paralyze us for a lifetime? How many times have we deliberately chosen to surround ourselves with people who have kept us in the chicken coop when we're supposed to be eagles? We've done it. I know I've done it lots of times in my life. But I'm so glad that the King of Kings, the, the Lord of Lords, keeps calling me to the table, being gracious, being merciful, being patient with me when I have a Mephibosheth mindset of thinking, okay, I don't deserve this, God. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. And God is telling me, oh, yes, you are. I made you in my image. I made you fearfully and wonderfully made in my sight. You are the head and not the tail. You're the apple of my eye. So God keeps telling us that. And that's if you want to break free from being in the mindset of Mephibosheth in the mindset where you are allowing your issues to become your identity, then you have to know who you are in God. You have to push past your issue and not let it become your identity. And then you have to surround yourself with people to lift you up to the place so that you can soar like an eagle instead of keeping you in the chicken coop. All right. So yes, I am enough to move past my Mephibosheth uh, mindset. Yes, I am good enough. I'm worthy enough. And I will not quit until I'm all that God calls me to be. And so 
Again, i like to thank everyone to join me tonight. And this topic was from two of my books. Yes, I Am Enough, uh, my latest book. I hope you got it. If you don't, please go to TanyaWhite.com right now. Or you can go to Amazon, but Amazon takes a long time to pay a sister, okay? So go to my website, or if you're in the Louisville area, I will deliver it to you. And if you don't have this book, you can't quit now. Uh, it's a 42-day journey, just like if you have read The Purpose Driven Life. This book, You Can't Quit Now, is all about perseverance. And I talk about developing uh, the perseverance uh, throughout your life. But you can get both of these tonight via TanyaWhite.com, my online store, for $29, which is a discount, plus tax and shipping. I will autograph and sign it for you and give you a wonderful you, Yes, I Am Enough pen. So go now. Even if you got it, get it for somebody else. Bless somebody else who you know has the mindset of uh, allowing their issues to become their identity. Um, because we can't remain stifled, you guys. One, if we remain stifled in what has happened to us and what people have done to us and what we've done to ourselves, we will never be and soar to the level that God wants us to. And it's not, God doesn't want us to go to higher levels just to be selfish. He wants to go, us to go higher because somebody is looking at us. Somebody is being inspired and motivated by us. And if we stay stagnant, nobody can be blessed. Nobody can uh, be inspired. Nobody can say, hey, she did it and so can I. So please move past your Mephibosheth mindset. How you do that is to pray and ask God. Uh, to help you. And then also get Tanya White's book. You can't quit now. Yes, I am enough. Go to TanyaWhite.com right now and get it. I will put it in the mail for you tomorrow. Um, all right. So that is my time. It is nine o'clock. I, I thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedule. Miss Terry Jordan Carpenter. Thank you for joining. I am going to, I'm going to touch base with you because I really do want to do that beauty shop. Uh, book tour this summer. Julia Crittenden. Hey, uh, Lindy Keys. Keep my sister uh, calm tomorrow at LWC. Okay, Lindy. All right. I love you guys. If you have any feedback, any questions, you know, you can inbox me, share this once I upload it to uh, YouTube and encourage people. Hey, get Tanya White's book. You know, you know, I, I try to be and, and write where God wants me to, to bless the masses. Tell them to buy the book. And if you are in Louisville area Saturday, I will be at Israel Baptist Church as a vendor for their Women in Unity Fellowship. So come out. It, uh, they're going to be talking to two dynamic speakers uh, whom I never heard before, and I've never been to this church. So I'm excited because I love uh, meeting new people. So come Saturday. It's at 2 o'clock. Uh, I've been posting on my Facebook uh, page. Uh, and share the word. It's time for us to come together and unify women, men, families, children, everybody, because we need to inspire and encourage one another. All right. I love you guys, and you have a great night.